finally, finally, it's, it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen. The NFL is here. I'm a little late on some preseason predictions, so I wanted to get those out of the way in this video today as well. I was supposed to do them last week. Then I was trying to do it on Labor Day weekend. And I, was just, I was just like, I, I don't have the time for this. There's too much college football on, and I'm tired. So you know, we we got we got some we got some good stuff cooking for week number one. You see the schedule for it. Lions Chiefs will kick us off a smorgasbord of 1 p.m. games, and then a smorgasbord of 4:25 games, both. CBS and Fox is going to be a double header. You know, everybody's going to be asking 506 Sports, the guy who runs that account, you know, on Twitter.com. Still, I'm still calling it Twitter. I'm not calling it anything else. I'm calling it Twitter. Uh, he's definitely going to be asking him about the maps. Of course, there's other storylines like, you know, NFL Plus being a thing, the streaming services, you know, just getting out of hand, you know, with Amazon. Yeah, and Peacock getting games for not just, you know, exclusive games, but playoff games. Yes, Peacock is getting a playoff game this year. I know. Crazy, right? So it's been a long off season. It's finally September. It's finally time to talk the NFL, everything like that. Um, man, I, I'm excited. The Cowboys are going to, my Cowboys are going to face off against the New York football Giants. On Sunday night, and then the Bills and the Jets finish it off on Monday night. Going to be one hell of a weekend. There's a lot of storylines to look for, and I've picked some from basically every game. So um, why don't we start with that Lions-Chiefs game that will kick us off. Are the Lions legit? A lot of people have the Lions touted very highly with Jared Goff leading the way. You have guys like David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs. I'm on Ross St. Brown, you know, a really, really, really good, you know, set of guys. And then there's some other guys, you know, kind of, I mean, they, they, they're, they're, they're kind of okay. They're kind of okay. You know, um, there, there's some defensive guys, you know, they're, you know, underrated, can definitely do, you know, some damage. But ultimately, it's the Patrick Mahomes show. It's Herbert the Frog, Patrick Mahomes, you know, Doing his thing, and without Travis Kelsey tomorrow, probably, um, he's going to have to look to guys like Jarek McKinnon and, and Marquez, Valdez, Scantling, and Isaiah Pacheco. Again, you know, with the whole running back by committee thing, that's been also been a big topic in the NFL. You're going to need guys like Pacheco. You're going to need guys, you know, that can just do things like that. So, uh it's going to be interesting, you know, um, McKinnon as well. It's going to be interesting to see how some of these other guys, you know, get get their reps in without Travis Kelsey. And then, you know, Sunday we start with Joe Cool, Joe Burrow. So the three, the three J's: Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase. This one is going to be real good. I mean, you, I mean, the the Cincinnati offense is just potent, real potent. But the Browns do have Deshaun Watson. Yeah, it's Deshaun Watson, the guy, the same guy that got caught, you know, doing some things that's very questionable. But, you know, it is what it is at this point. You know, he's Cleveland starter now. So, you know, he, along with Nick Chubb, Amari Cooper, David Njoku, Donovan Peoples-Jones, just a really, a really good Browns roster, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, I still think Cincinnati comes out on top of this one, though. I still think, you know, there's just, there's enough firepower that the Browns can stay in this one, but I don't think it's going to be enough to stop Joe Cool. <laughs> Not enough. And then you have Baker Mayfield starting. I know. Crazy, right? The way Baker Mayfield has regressed as an NFL caliber quarterback is just wild to me. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are just not that type of team anymore. I mean, no Tom Brady anymore. So what do you do with Chris Godwin? What do you do with Mike Evans? What do you do with these guys? What do you do? Who knows? 
it's gonna be it's gonna be weird to see, you know. And with Kirk Cousins throwing the ball up to Double J, Justin Jefferson, I mean, my goodness, man. You know, this is this is gonna be interesting. Minnesota's a team that, you know, just kind of fell off hard last year. I don't know how they got to the point they got to last year, but that was last year. It's a new year. It's a new year. And with some key pieces they picked up and they lost some guys as well. Of course, every NFL team has lost guys. So, you know, you have guys like Jordan Addison they picked up, uh TJ Hawkinson still, you know, kicking. And, I mean, Minnesota, I think, has the potential to do a lot more this year. But they just have to execute. And Tampa Bay is just not that type of team. The NFC South in general is just not it. And you'll see what I mean, you know, later. Um, so Houston is going to trot out C.J. Stroud. I, I, I genuinely do not care. You you guys know my stance on both C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young at this point. I do not think these guys are ready right now. Don't think they're ready. But you have Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dobbins, Odell Beckham. I mean, this kind of offense, a top five quarterback. Yes, NFL pundits, a top five quarterback in Lamar Jackson doing his thing. This is going to be a fun Baltimore offense to watch Fun Baltimore offense. Odell's back, so we'll see what he can do as long as he doesn't stick it up. No pun intended. Um, San Francisco now has Rock Purdy leading the helm officially. Like he's going to just lead the way from now on. Now that Trey Lance has been traded away to the Dallas Cowboys for a paltry, what, fourth round pick. So, you know. I mean, the 49ers, they still have, you know, all the pieces there, but it's just Brock Purdy's, you know, had an injured elbow, you know, had his had his throwing arm injured. And, I mean, it takes a lot of time to recover from. So we'll find out, you know, how in the world this 49ers team can keep it up. Because so they were really good last year, especially with the addition of CMC. Um and then Kenny Pickett on the other side, you know, it's it's a really interesting Steelers roster, but I don't know if they can get the job done completely. Uh, I mean, you look you look at the Steelers roster and you think, oh, it's just you know, I mean, it's it's decent, but I just I just don't I just don't see it right now. It's it's interest. It's going to be interesting to see what Kenny Pickett can do um, for reals this time, but. I don't know if this is enough against San Francisco. I really don't know. Definitely a, one of the highlight games for Sunday, though. And you have T-Law, Trevor Lawrence, and those Jacksonville Jaguars going right back up, keeping that momentum. How did they get Calvin Ridley? I have no idea. Christian Kirk, St. Jones, Evan Ingram. I mean, the list goes on. Jacksonville looks – they look like a team that's going to be – legit this year. They could do some damage in the, in the AFC. They could do some damage. This is going to be interesting. Uh, divisional matchup against the Indianapolis Colts with Anthony Richardson. <laughs> Anthony Richardson, yes. The same guy from Florida that just I, I genuinely don't see the hype in it. I really don't. Uh, and I've said it for a couple years now. Or at, least, at least last year and I think this year is going to show as well that this is a this is going to be a lot of change with these new quarterbacks, and I just don't see that these are not the years to be putting new quarterbacks out onto the market. Get some guys from the USFL, get some guys from the XFL, you know, like Alex McGoo or or, or an IFL quarterback. Hint, hint. Get Drew Powell. Get him. Um, you know, it, it's it's just not the right time to be trotting out guys like Anthony Richardson yet. Indianapolis just doesn't do it for me. Like, same thing with Carolina and Atlanta. Now, again, you look at Des Ritter, you look at Bryce Young, it, it just doesn't fit. I mean, Bijan is in the backfield. I mean, you've got 
an interesting Atlanta roster. Pretty young, pretty inexperienced. And they're going up against Carolina, who's really in kind of a rebuild mode with Bryce Young anyway. But honestly, this is Atlanta's to lose. Let's hope they don't bungle it up. Let's hope they do not. Uh, the only thing I can say about Arizona is that they're garbage. They are garbage. Uh, Washington, no Dan Schneider anymore. Uh, you know, you know, or not Schneider, Dan Snyder. I'm thinking of, uh, I don't know why I'm thinking of that guy. His name just kind of popped out of my mouth for some reason. But yeah, um, Washington, you know, looks pretty improved, I'll say, you know. Um, got a nice defense, I think, still. Bryant Robinson on offense, I still think everything looks pretty nice for Washington. It's just, can't they do more with what they have um, than last year? Who knows? Uh, Tennessee, it's certainly a matchup, you know, with the Titans. It's going up against the Saints, it's certainly a matchup. I mean, Ryan Tannehill's still here. You still have Derrick Henry. You have D Hop now. You have Nick Folk at kicker. You have Nick Folk. But I mean, on the other side, you have Derek Carr for the Saints. Is that the answer? Is that the answer with these kinds of wide receivers? You know, with Michael Thomas, with Chris Olave. Is he the answer? Jamal Williams in the backfield. The is this the answer in New Orleans? I don't think so. This one's going to be a weird watch, I think. Again, definitely going to be a weird game to look at for sure. Um, Miami and the L.A. Chargers, that's going to be a movie, man. That is going to be a movie. Waddle, Hill, get catches from, you know, Tua. Boy, that is going to be fun. That is really going to be fun. And you have Justin Herbert on the other side. Throwing it up to Keenan Allen, throwing it up to Austin Eckler, Mike Williams as well. Going to be a movie, man. That game is going to be fun. Look at look at that game. Look at that one right there. And then the meme game, I think. This is going to be the most meme-worthy game of the first week. You have the Las Vegas Raiders and the Denver Broncos. Jimmy G is stepping out. It's a Raiders country. But he's going to be, it's that man that said Broncos country. Let's ride. Russell Wilson. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Like, I don't I don't know what kind of game we're going to expect from these two teams right here. Like, this is probably going to be the funniest game of the day. I mean, there's still some pieces that Vegas has from last year, like Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams. Notice I haven't really talked about too many defensive guys um, yet. You know, aside from like, you know, TJ Watt for like the Steelers still being a habit. Uh, there's just not a lot to talk about right now, you know. Uh, and I'm looking at some other things as well. And I mean, just some, there's just solid pieces all around. You know, the defenses have been spread pretty good, I'll say. And then, it, you know, Philadelphia, it's going to be Philadelphia's. It's going to be Philadelphia's NFC to lose, I think. Jalen Hurts is that guy. He is him. Um, it is going to be an interesting year looking at this roster. I mean, they brought a lot of pieces back. And, I mean, they could, they could, keep, they could keep this up and go straight back to the Super Bowl. If, if the, the, the way the NFC is looking, they could go straight back to the Super Bowl, I think. But... I'll hold off and, you know, talk about my predictions in a moment. Uh, and on the other side, you have Mac Jones. You have Zeke Elliott. Yes, Zeke is now New England Patriot. I know. Crazy, right? Then in, the, then in a new era quarterbacking matchup of this great rivalry of Green Bay and Chicago, Justin Fields, Jordan Love, I know. It's it's a matchup. It's certainly a matchup, but I don't I don't I don't know I don't know about this game, guys. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be it's gonna be a weird one. 
Um, the Rams, uh, they lost everything. Everybody left, man. Bobby Wagner is going to tear apart Matthew Stafford. I mean, with Geno Smith and the guys they brought back, the NFC West, maybe even maybe Seattle's, I think. And then those Dallas Cowboys, you know, now they've got, you know, a couple other pieces that'll help them out. Brandon Cooks, you know, Tony Pollard has been franchise tag. Um, Saquon got what he needed. Darren Waller is on a, is a New York Giant now. I mean, this is going to be interesting. Daniel Jones has definitely improved. He's definitely improved a lot last year. It, it like both sides of this Sunday night game have improved in many different ways. So we will see what kind of game we're in for. Two really good defenses, too. Um, and then the old man, Aaron Rodgers, takes on Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. I don't know why I'm, I'm feeling kind of high on the Jets, especially since they just got Dalvin Cook. That That is a game changer for me right there. So you're probably wondering, what do, you, what do you mean by that? What do you mean, big boy? What do you mean? What are you, what are you talking about? So I got some predictions for this season that I need to get off my chest. And and the NFC, I think, again, it's a lot weaker this year to me. So, again, Philly is going to come out the East. It is Philadelphia's NFC to lose. Uh, Atlanta. I have to pick somebody from the AFC South. A lot of people are picking Atlanta. I'm going to go with the safe option as well and pick Atlanta. Detroit will take the NFC North. I think I think with all the improvements that they have, they're going to take it. Seattle will take the NFC West. And then my three wild cards, even though there should only be two wild cards, but, you know, the NFL likes their money. Um, so Dallas... Minnesota and San Francisco will be my wild card teams as far as my predictions go. Um, the AFC, definitely stacked. I mean, this is the first time in a long time. I mean, ever since, you know, ever since there was no Manning, no, no Roethlisberger, and no Brady, you know, you know, I mean, the AFC hasn't been as stacked when those three left. You know, it, it was just Mahomes. And, of course, you know, that's just how it's been. But now, you know, now I, I think, you know, with the way the AFC has been the last couple of years, they've definitely improved a lot more than the AFC has. And, I mean, with Cincinnati, with Buffalo, with Kansas City, those three alone – are going to win their divisions. Jacksonville will repeat as the AFC South champion. I mean, come on. Do you expect Tennessee to really do anything? Come on. I still think they're a wild card team due to Derrick Henry, but that's about it. Um, the Jets are going to somehow get a wild card seed. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but again, the Dalvin Cook condition just helps things out a lot. There was no reason for Minnesota to get rid of him, but you know, money is money, and things are things. Baltimore is going to have to just settle with a wild card. It, it, it's an either-or scenario there with Cincinnati and Baltimore. Like, you could interchange those two. Um, I didn't want to end up with, like, three teams from, like, the same division in in the wild card. So, you know, that's just how I, I kind of pictured it. Um, the MVP is going to be Jalen Hurts. I mean, it, it has to be Jalen Hurts this year. He and the Cardinals, they're they are looking, they are trending downward that badly. A lot of people have them cemented as the team that will get the number one pick, and I think they will. I don't know if it'll be 0 17, but I think they will get the number one pick. And my Super Bowl champion is actually a shocking surprise. I think the Cincinnati Bengals will take the Super Bowl. It is Joe, it is Joe's time. Let him have this one. I'm, I'm a guy. Who likes parody? I'm a guy who likes, you know, chaotic things to happen. And the NFL provides that each and every week. So 
the way I see it is that the Cincinnati Bengals are going to somehow beat one of these NFC playoff teams because, again, the playoffs are unpredictable. We have a long way to get there. We have 18 weeks, 272 games across four months. And we get all the way to January, and we get to January, and the playoffs are just murky, aside from like the seven seeds, because, again, the NFL is greedy. We don't need a seventh seed in the NFL playoffs, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, so there's my predictions for the 2023-2024 season. I know I didn't go into as much detail because I don't want to get, you know, I don't want this to be super, super long or anything like that. But in any case, that is what, that is my, you know, predictions for this year. That is my week one overview for this upcoming week. And I mean, I'm going to be watching a lot of games. It'll be a lot of games to watch. Can't wait to watch them all and then, you know, come back next Wednesday night and talk about week two talk and recap, you know, what happened in this first week. So um, that's just the way the new format is going to work. Same thing with college football. That's how it's worked so far. And I hope you stick around for the ride because we're going on a journey together trying to get to 500 subscribers so I can get that sweet, sweet YouTube cash. And yeah, that'll do it from here. I will see you all on Sunday. We got a lot of indoor arena football nonsense to talk about. Please pray for me because there's so much nonsense going on right now in the landscape of indoor and arena football. And I'll talk about all that on Sunday night. It'll probably be after the Cowboys game, so I'll probably have that video up after the Cowboys game. So, y'all take care, and I'll see you all on Sunday night.